Today's video has been sponsored by Mizen. The insane 100 hour fudgy brownies, then of course the 150 hour chocolate cake. Alvin, we meet again. But hello my peeps, welcome back to the channel. Now, this is one of those recipes that's just a thorn in my side. It's what keeps me up at night. You guys have essentially spammed me with this recipe ever since it came out almost a year and a half ago now. And it is of course Alvin's 100 hour lasagna. This culinary cacophony is comprised of some homemade pasta lasagna sheets, a four hour braised short rib tomato sauce, and then of course a super rich and creamy pecorino bechamel. Which would really be a sauce mornay since it has cheese but whatever. And of course the obligatory, possibly unnecessary days worth of waiting for it to chill in the fridge. Will this one be worth all of the time and monetary investments that it calls for? Leave your predictions down in the comments, but let's get right into it. As demonstrated, we have certainly got our work cut out for us the next couple of days, peeps. So it is a great thing that we've got some help for this one from our good buddies over at Mizen. You guys already know how much I love Mizen. They are the best friend of the channel. You watch me use their chef's knife and their pans in basically every one of my videos. And today they are back to once again support the channel and to show off their incredible Dutch oven. Mizen offers premium kitchen tools sold at affordable prices. And this guy is no exception because the Mizen and Dutch oven offers an incredible product at a much more affordable price point. This thing costs close to half as much as other pricier Dutch ovens. Both in Misen's testing and of course in my experience, this Dutch oven has shown incredible durability. You can use it time and time again and it will basically refuse to show any wear and tear and that's in large part because of its four layer enamel coating, meaning that this thing is constructed with quality and accuracy and is built to last a lifetime. With Mizen's 4.5 millimeter cast iron core, you get a product that is designed for even heating, great heat retention, and maybe my favorite part of the Dutch oven are the lid options. As you can see, I went with the grill lid, which is super versatile and unique in and of itself, and I have had a freaking ball figuring out what I can create with it. This Dutch oven is going to help me tremendously throughout this video, as you will see. But just to hammer home the point, I also made some braised short ribs over mashed potatoes. And the ease of use and overall quality of the products I get when I use this thing are just unmatched. So if you are interested in any of Mason's incredible products, click the link in the top line of the description. Use code Seymour and you will get 20% off of your first Mason order. And thanks so much to Mason for sponsoring today's video. But okay, back to the topic at hand. Everything you will need to make Alvin's ridiculously long lasagna will be some red wine and flour, olive oil, whole milk, celery, salt, and San Marzano tomato sauce, some abnormally large carrots and fresh nutmeg, pecorino or parmesan and black pepper, tomato paste, 11 egg yolks, some pancetta, short ribs, a yellow onion, butter, and fresh parsley. So here we are back in the gauntlet of a 100 plus hour Alvin recipe. I don't particularly dislike doing these, but I feel like I gotta leave them spaced out. It takes a little extra brain power to make sure I replicate his methods and techniques exactly with the exact amount of time in the fridge. So I can't do too many of them in a row. That's why there's usually a few months between each one. Couple of things right off the bat with this one. As with all of Alvin's recipes that he puts on his personal channel, there is no recipe for this. There's no measurements, there's no direction other than what you see in the video. It's pretty much all up to you. Which is why, as I go through this, I'm trying to take some rough notes of the amount of stuff I think he's using and the stuff I will use, as well as the oven temperatures and cooking time and all that fun stuff, so if this comes out half decent, I will leave all this in the description for you to try to make it yourself if you are that bored and morbidly curious. I got started with the short rib tomato sauce, which is a whole lot of vegetables and red wine, some tomato paste, two jars of tomato sauce, as well as, of course, the short ribs that are gonna get a nice sear. I thought this was pretty genius because braising short ribs in a tomato-based sauce like this is a little less common than the traditional method of some type of wine and usually a stock. But for this application, it's pretty perfect because you're imparting all that beefy flavor in the tomatoes. Obviously, at the end of the baking process, you're gonna remove the short ribs, shred them up, and then add only the beef back. Just make sure to grab all of the bones out of this and discard them. They have done their jobs well. And based on some of the other recipes that I have replicated, I let this go in a 350 degree oven, 
for somewhere between two and a half and three-ish hours. One thing I definitely want to keep an eye on in the finished product is the flavor balances of all of this. For example, the only salt that I noticed is getting added into this is the stuff we sprinkled on the beef when it was getting seared, a little sprinkling that's gonna go in our homemade pasta dough, and that's pretty much it. That tomato sauce doesn't get anything extra once it's finished cooking. Our bechamel doesn't get any salt at all. Obviously, the pecorino is going to add a whole lot of salty umaminess, so I'm assuming that's where we're making up for it, but it's just a thing to keep an eye on at the end. The tomato sauce is going to get thrown in the fridge for four nights in total by the time we end up taking this back out. The bechamel comes together on day two and also ends up getting thrown in the fridge until that fourth day comes around. And then on said fourth day is when we start up with the third and final component, the homemade pasta dough. I sometimes wonder if Alvin purposely planned to have this many hours in between each component or just kind of makes each part when he has time in his life and then ends up using that to his advantage in the final product. Alvin, if you are in fact lurking out there, please let us know in the comments or wherever. I'm pretty curious. I then spend the next 20 or so minutes separating about a dozen eggs from their yolks, eventually combining that with some flour and stirring them up like an old Italian grandma to make some fresh pasta dough. And some of you may know this already, but as I film the cooking portion of these videos, I take little notes to the side just so I remember everything that happened so I can recount that to you during this voiceover. And at some point during this pasta dough making process, I wrote down existential dread. Was that because I finally realized I was on the fourth day of making a single lasagna and I felt like a moron? Or because this September will be exactly seven years since I started making food videos on YouTube and I'm still doing the same shit and cracking the same lame dad jokes on the internet for a job? I don't know, it's anybody's guess. This career is weird, man, because I don't leave the house all that often. I stay in my little town for the most part. And a lot of the time, no offense, I forget that you guys are living, breathing people out there that are watching these videos. So anytime I get to meet some of you guys in person, like the other night at the movies when four lovely people came up to say hello, shout out to you guys. It's very weird in general, and those days are the ones that kind of put it all into perspective. Anyways, that was one of my weirdest tangents in a very long time. I got my pasta dough all rolled out, chopped up into eight inch long rectangles. I made sure to give them a little brushing of olive oil just so they didn't stick together. And then I painstakingly laid down each one of my 20-ish layers, rotating between the pasta, the meat sauce, and the bechamel, and so on. I was really eager to get this thing baked off and to see how my layers came out to see if they're all even and pretty. But just as you thought you were done, this gets wrapped up and stuck in the fridge for another night to rest. I know I'm beating a dead horse with this point, but I really can't help myself. I have never in my life heard of somebody assembling a lasagna with cooked pasta sheets and then letting it rest in the fridge, like, purposefully. Will the pasta not absorb any excess liquid and then get mushy? Will the bechamel hold up in there? Like, I'm very curious. The next day, I removed the plastic wrap and the warning to my family, loaded on some pecorino, and then baked it off for about 45 minutes at 375 degrees. I did have a bit of an issue trying to get some even color across the top of this. So I flicked on the broiler for about five minutes and just had to deal with the burnt edges around the outside of this. And to finish this guy off while it is cooling, we gotta chop up our now wilted parsley since it's five days old and add a nice generous sprinkling across the top. In terms of actual active work hours, this is definitely on the lower end of the spectrum for an Alvin recipe. How would that translate to the actual outcome and flavors? Let's find out. The smells coming off this is unbelievable. I think it's the combination of the cheese and the short ribs and those uh, stewed vegetables. It is something else. They're not the prettiest layers in the world as far as like evenness, but I don't really care. All that oozing sauce and cheese, uh, that looks better to me than perfectly even layers. Wow. This is one of the most delicious things I have eaten in a very long time. Every single component of this hits, from the sauce to the pasta and the cheese. No one component sticks out more than the other. I was worried about the pasta being overcooked, 
That was not a problem. The thickness is perfect. I was worried about the salt levels because outside of in the pasta dough and then uh, sprinkled on the beef when they got seared, there's no added salt in this, but I was purposely keeping an eye out for that and it is perfect. It needs no more and no less. Every flavor of this across the board is so perfectly balanced. If I had to be annoyingly picky and pick out one thing that I don't love, uh, it's the vegetables. I either didn't cut them small enough or I didn't cook them long enough. You get a little bit of texture and I don't love um, chewing on carrots and celery in lasagna. Overall, absolutely delicious to die for. I'm very happy I got the chance to make it. Is it worth 100 hours? I don't know. It's gonna be up to your situation with how many extra funds and hours of free time you have. I would say maybe try an abbreviated version. Try to make the sauce one day, the bechamel the next. Will the flavors be a little bit less intense? Possibly, but maybe we'll try that experiment for another day. Just try this in whatever way you can. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave me a big old like. Obviously it helps the channel and this video a ton. Let me know which 100 hour, 150 hour craziness recipe you wanna see me make next. Leave it down in the comments or let me know over on Instagram. It's David underscore Seymour one. Other than that, have a fantastic weekend and I will see you right back here next time. Peace. With the M, M without the A, D Flipping burgers and my money, super lazy Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me Try and supersize my life with my A-team Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision